Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought part four of our series, Transformed. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thanks. Great, and so over the last Four weeks, we've been looking at uh, the stages really of transformation, right. awakening and surrendering, prioritizing and excelling, um, and kind of this journey that your heart takes as you become transformed in your life to look more like Christ. Um, so I'm just going to ask, I've got a few questions, so I'm sure. just going to jump right in. Okay, so I'm here on Sunday, and God's stirring in me, and I want to be transformed, and Uh, do all the things that we've been talking about, but I leave here and I go back to an environment that I I don't feel like is conducive to living a transformed life to surrender. My my work is not a place where people are surrendered or Mm -hmm. are part of believers. My marriage is hard or um, the kids' school, all these things that are in my life that make it seem like this transformation that we've been talking about on Sunday it's, it's hard for me to live that out where I am, yeah. where I find myself. Well, then you find yourself right where every generation of serious Christian has ever found themselves. You probably even have it better. Even though you mention your boss doesn't know Christ and there's ethical issues perhaps going on and, and you're having a hard marriage and this sort of thing, uh, whatever the, the hypothetical situation you're describing, which I think is characteristic of a lot of faith bridgers. Let's uh, draw back the lens and look at historical Christianity. How was, Christ, how was Christianity birthed? It was birthed with Christians hiding out in catacombs. Why? Because if the Romans found them, they would slice their heads off uh, for their faith. Well, you probably don't have it that bad, you know? and. Um, and, and, and that's still going on today, isn't it, in other parts of the world? Um, so wherever Christianity has thrived and spread, it is because there are agents of light, agents of the gospel, agents of Christ who are saying, who are pre-deciding, I belong to Jesus and Jesus alone and come hell or high water, whatever it is, I'm going to live for Jesus. And now you frame it that way and you go back and you say, well, my boss is kind of a pain in the fanny and, you know, whatever. But it puts it in perspective Mm -hmm. and I think exposes the uh, flabby muscles that many American Christians have because the assumption almost in that is, well, I just wish my life could always just be like church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But that's never been what vibrant Christianity uh, thrived on. And maybe the tectonic plates of culture are shifting and and America won't even be that 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years from now. Uh, So, you know, let's, let's put on our big boy pants and our big girl pants and say, okay, if I'm gonna follow after Christ, I'm going to have to do it like they did in the Bible and read some church history and read about the, the people who got crucified upside down and said, but I'm not pulling off my faith. I know that Jesus is alive. I know he came for us. That's where my hope is and that's where my security is and that's where my eternity is going to be. And go and do likewise. I think that's r- r- really how we have to, to frame it. Though it is easy for any of us to get into sort of a woe is me. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you know, I have such a hard life. And I'm not saying anybody listening doesn't have a hard life because everybody has a hard life in their own ways. But so has any Christian who was ever worth a salt throughout history. Hmm, that's good. So I guess this is one of those questions that's kind of um, a moving target as well. Tell me this. How do I know it's working? I want to be transformed. Sure. I'm trying to be transformed. Tell me how I know that it's working. Well, I would say several things. Number one, um, you can know if you're being faithful. You can't necessarily bring about the, the, the harvest or the fruit, you know, and read Jeremiah. 
talk about a guy who tried to speak truth and live it and cried all the time and, and never could see any fruit from it. So we can't even be responsible for that. Uh, um, although sometimes the Lord will let us see some fruit and praise the Lord when he gives us a glimpse into that. But I think the litmus test that we have to always be applying to ourselves is the, I'm going to be gut level honest and frank with myself and, and say, am I really following after Christ in my ethics, in my conversation, in my uh, behavior, uh, in my home life? And we have to be uh, honest with ourselves. Now, the problem with all of us is we're not honest with ourselves. And that's where community comes in. And the, the importance of having being in a grow group like the ones that you oversee, um, where you have a brother or sister or two uh, or more, but even within a larger grow group, maybe a few that you're clustering with extra close, where you're being transparent and honest and saying, here is a scene from my life this past week and where I had to figure out how do I live as a disciple in this situation? Do you think I got it right? And being transparent enough to being real enough to, to expose our real selves to other real Christians. This isn't people who aren't Christians. That didn't do any help. You've got to be people who who love Jesus and are studying the word and mm -hmm. are willing to say, well, let's let's look at what God's word said and let's check kind of what you did. And yeah, I think you did. I, I don't think there's any better way. Or, well, you know, that was one way to do it, but maybe this would be a better way next time and more in keeping with God's word and, you know. So I, I think, um, you know, and, and, and so we, we're being honest with ourselves. We're being honest with community and we're hoping for fruit. And sometimes the Lord gives us fruit and that's extra bonus when you see you know, or even somebody speaks to us and says, like I was illustrating, you know, I can tell something's different about you. Uh, well, praise the Lord when that happens. Mm -hmm. But even when it doesn't happen, we're called still to pick up our cross and follow hard after Jesus. That's good. That's good. Um, one of the things I think even Julie talked about is surrender can be costly. Yeah. Um, to your time, to your life, to everything. To, to everything. Um, and so when am I done? When do I know that I have arrived at transformation? And when you really got transformed, when I'm standing uh, uh, over your coffin doing your funeral, <laughs> because uh, this, the Bible says we will only be fully transformed in glory. And so this side of heaven, we're in process. The, the big theological word is sanctification. It's if justification is where our, our line is crossed and we drive a stake in the ground and say, now I'm a Christian, sanctification is the process of being brought into more Christ likeness. Or like Paul said in 2 Corinthians uh, 2, uh, 3, 18, uh, we're being transformed like we were talking about today. This is the sanctifying process. Mm -hmm. So you never graduate. Well, you do graduate, but you don't graduate this side of heaven. Mm -hmm. It's only then that we finally cross uh, that finish line and join in the uh, crowds of heaven. And, you know, and that'll be a wonderful thing. But in the meanwhile, we press on, we run the good race, we fight the good fight, and we carry our cross faithfully. That's awesome. Great. Well, thank you for this and for this series has been transformative for myself. And I know Sully said for him when he was preaching as well, um, and that's for me as taking, well, taking a look at your heart and your life and continue to assess where does God want to grow me. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.